Domestic life has been the focus of television shows since the very first sitcom aired on network television in 1947. Mary Kay and Johnny followed the adventures and misadventures of the straight-laced bank employee Johnny Stearns and his zany wife Mary Kay. Why? Because there's nothing funnier than family. Here are some of the funniest TV families of all time. Like the Cosby show, before it, Blackish centers on an upper-middle-class African-American family living in a predominantly white neighborhood. But more than the Huxtables ever were, as New York Times critic Neil Genslinger notes, the Johnsons are wrestling with whether their comfortable lives are causing them to forget that they're black. A young man, Will Smith, from the tough streets of West Philadelphia is sent to live with his auntie and uncle in their affluent Bel Air neighborhood. In this quintessential 90s sitcom, the Banks family entertained audiences for six seasons, starting with the pilot episode on September 10, 1990. In addition to Philadelphia native Smith, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air was loosely based on the real-life experiences of Warner Brothers executive Benny Medina, who drifted between foster homes and his aunt's house in the Los Angeles neighborhood of Watts. Hilarity ensues in the Heffernan household with the arrival of Carrie's loud-mouthed, volatile father Arthur Spooner, a demented old circus monkey, who seems hell-bent on disrupting Doug's peaceful suburban existence. Kevin James talked Jerry Stiller out of retiring after Seinfeld to play the role of Arthur, and it's a good thing he did, because he created one of the funniest characters in sitcom history. George's parents made their first appearance in the 22nd episode of the fourth season, The Handicap Spot. At the time, John Randolph played George's father Frank, though he was later replaced by Jerry Stiller, who originally had passed on the role because he'd never heard of Seinfeld. George is often caught in the middle of Frank and Estelle Costanza's constantly bickering, which might explain why he turned out so neurotic and self-loathing. The Bundys are anything but the perfect American family. In fact, they're about as far from the Cleavers as you can get. They're vulgar, crass, and often insulting to one another. Yet, at the end of the day they still love each other, and in a way that makes them more realistic than most TV families. Danny DeVito, who plays Dennis and Dee's legal, but not biological, father, joined the cast of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia after the first season to help boost the show's ratings. The strategy not only worked, but added a hilarious family element. The Reynolds are some of the most unethical and downright deranged characters on TV. Sanford and Son was the first sitcom to feature a predominantly black cast since the 1950s, The Amos and Andy Show. Created by Norman Lear, All in the Family, the show starred legendary comedian Red Fox as a grumpy old junk dealer who lives with his 30-something son Lamont, played by Demond Wilson. Similar to Lear's previous work, this groundbreaking show was noted for its edgy, racial humor. 16-year-old Erin Quinn lives under the same small roof as her parents, baby sister, aunt, cousin, and grandfather. Set in the early 1990s in Northern Ireland during the Troubles, Dairy Girls is one of the funniest shows to come out of the UK in a long time. It's about friendship, growing up under English oppression, and above all, family. To steal a line from Richard Lewis, Jeff and Susie Green are the couple from hell. He's lazy and unfaithful, and she's loud and shrewd. Somehow, though, they make it work, maybe because no one else can stand to be with them for more than a few minutes. Actor Jeff Garland, who plays Larry David's manager and best friend Jeff Green, has described his character as a pretty evil guy with no morals, no scruples. Set in the fictional town of Arlen, Texas, King of the Hill is loosely based on creator Mike Judge's childhood experiences growing up in the Dallas suburb of Garland. The show centers on the Hills, a typical American family led by Hank, who sells propane and propane accessories for Strickland Propane. Unlike similar animated comedies, King of the Hill takes a milder approach to American values, featuring humor based in realism. Not only are they one of the funniest families on TV, but the Belchers are also one of the most wholesome. Unlike Homer and Bart, they're never at each other's throats, and they never put each other down, like Peter Griffin often does with Meg. They're the type of family we'd all like to be a part of. Bob's Burgers debuted in 2011 and has remained consistently funny since then. 
This long-running ABC sitcom is based on show creator Adam F. Goldberg's real-life upbringing in Jenkintown, Pennsylvania, a suburb of Philadelphia, and there's home footage at the end of each episode to prove it. That said, not everything in the show happened to Goldberg and his family. Sometimes there are situations that happen to other writers on the show, and they get added. In fact, Goldberg was initially uncomfortable with sharing so many intimate details about his life and had planned on calling the show, The Silvers. The Roses are forced to relocate to the tiny town of Schitt's Creek after being defrauded by their business manager. Dan Levy, who plays David, came up with the premise for the show after imagining what wealthy reality TV families would do if they suddenly lost all their money. Former SCTV members Eugene Levy, Dan's real-life father, and Catherine O'Hara are pitch-perfect as the formerly rich parents, as are Dan Levy and Annie Murphy as their spoiled children who struggle to adjust to small-town life. What makes the foreman so funny is the contrast between Eric's parents Red and Kitty. The father is a hard-nosed war veteran and former factory worker who doesn't hesitate to chastise his son, while the mother is cheerful and overly protective of Eric and his friends. The family's dynamic is a big reason why that 70s show was the second-longest-running Fox series after Married. With children, spanning eight seasons and 200 episodes. The closest thing Frazier and Niles come to being sports fans is attending the play, Tears of the Mariner, which their father mistakes for, Pride of the Yankees. The snooty psychiatrist brothers couldn't be any less like their father Marty, a retired Seattle police officer whose idea of high living is sitting around all day in a comfy recliner with a can of Ballantyne and his beloved Jack Russell Eddy while watching Angie Dickinson movies. Before the Connors, the Griffins, and the Simpsons, there were the Bunkers, led by Archie Bunker, a curmudgeonly blue-collar worker and World War II veteran who loves his family no matter how much he complains about them. As Sasha Cohen of Smithsonian Magazine notes, All in the Family was a groundbreaking sitcom because it dealt with topical, controversial themes, such as race relations, homosexuality and feminism, an effort to reach baby boomer audiences, and for representing the kind of ordinary, working people who had thus far been invisible on screen. The Simpsons are America's family. They've been with us for more than three decades, and while a lot has changed in that time, Homer, Marge, Bart, Lisa, and Maggie have remained the same, serving as a mirror to American society and all of its many hilarious flaws. After 34 seasons and 745 episodes, The Simpsons is an American institution and was deservedly named the best show of the 20th century by time. If not the funniest, the Bluths are quite possibly the most dysfunctional TV family of all time. They are, quite simply, some of the greediest, most selfish, and downright crazy people you can imagine. After his father is imprisoned for defrauding investors, straight-laced son Michael has no choice but to move back home and try to keep his family together. Arrested Development ran for three seasons on Fox from 2003 to 2006 and was later revived for two more seasons on Netflix starting in 2013. Originally named the Wilkerson's, show creator Linwood Boomer later decided to remove any trace of the family's ethnicity by leaving their surname a mystery, thus making them relatable to audiences everywhere with their hilarious hijinks. Malcolm in the Middle won a Peabody Award, F, or providing audiences with a cleverly perceptive glimpse into the everyday ups and downs of a not-so-typical American family. Much to his wife Deborah's annoyance, Long Island sportswriter Ray Barone lives across the street from his overbearing parents, Frank and Marie, and their son Robert, an NYPD officer who has long resented his younger brother for being their mother's favorite child. Anyone with difficult family members, especially in-laws, can relate to the humor in Everybody Loves Raymond.